What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I am continuing my monthly builds series where I tell you guys parts lists for computers that you could build at home. I have four builds today, two AMD, two Intel. And before you start saying, hey Paul, how can you even recommend us to build computers when we can't even buy a graphics card for our computer? Don't worry, none of these builds actually require a graphics card. Excellent. The Thermaltake Tower 100 is a unique and versatile Mini-ITX chassis with a ton of features. Three tempered glass panels provide an ample view of your epic build. The vertical orientation means support for big three-slot graphics cards and up to 190 millimeter tall air coolers. And every side and top panel is removable, which makes building or accessing the inset magnetic dust filters way easier. This case performed well in my testing, even with a high-end 5900X and RTX 3080 system inside, and I like the full-size ATX power supply support too. For more on the Tower 100, from Thermaltake, click the sponsor link in the video description. A couple quick things before we get started. One is that uh, I usually do a straw poll, so there is a straw poll this month linked in the description. I haven't done that in the past couple months because stock has been sort of variable and difficult to predict, but wondering how you guys think I should be handling the GPU shortage in future videos. Last month I did this. I just made builds where a GPU wasn't included and I said find whatever GPU you can. This month I'm doing this, focusing on GPU-less solutions. I'm using iGPUs or APUs, uh, going by AMD's old terminology. A couple other options down there too, so go ahead and vote if you want to give me some feedback. And then also, if you want to see me actually assemble a computer, because I'm not doing that today, I'm just going over the parts lists, check out my builds playlist where there are many, many builds going back many years and uh, even some recent ones. Let's get into it with our first build. The total price here is $533, and what I'm going for here is functional systems with parts that you can actually buy that are not ridiculously overpriced. So this system is based on the Ryzen 3 3200G, which is a four core, eight thread processor that has integrated graphics as well. It's $130, and that is $30 marked up over the original MSRP of $100. So it is a little bit of a trade-off here in that you're having to pay a little bit more money than I think what this part is actually worth, but you don't need a graphics card and that's a, a big hurdle to overcome right now if you're building a computer for gaming. And this computer could still handle light gaming. I wouldn't throw anything too heavy at it like uh, Cyberpunk 2077 with all the settings maxed or anything, but it will be functional for gaming with the rest of the parts which are a B450 MSI motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR4 3600 memory, a crucial P1 500 gig NV VME SSD, $70 case from NZXT, and a $65 Seasonic 650 watt power supply. So if you want to build a system right now and you want it to work, you have to have video outs, and that is that is truly the rub at this point in time, is getting uh, video outs in general. And APUs are a good solution. APU is Accelerated Processing Unit. It was a term that AMD coined back when they first started launching these, and I felt like it caught on slowly, and then after a while AMD was like, we don't want to use APU anymore, but people still do. It means a CPU that has graphics integrated as well. This this particular one has Vega 8 graphics, and you can even overclock them just a little bit. And the integrated graphics from AMD's APUs are going to outperform uh, Intel's integrated graphics, even if you're talking about the newest 11th gen stuff. For a motherboard, I've fallen back to the old standard $110 to $115 MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. The Max version means it's guaranteed to ship with an updated uh, UEFI or BIOS, so it will automatically recognize newer processors like the 4000 and 5000 series ones. It's not in stock right now, but it will be in stock within a week, and I think I saw this at another retailer listed for like 110. So this is a really solid all-around B450 motherboard, although you will not get PCI Express Gen 4 support with this, which doesn't matter if you're installing a 3200G, because that doesn't support it anyway. I do want to point out that the other processor in my next build is a Ryzen Pro 4650G which is a little bit harder to get your hands on. And I'll come back to that in a minute, but I just wanted to point out that for this particular motherboard, if you're thinking about other processors, you should go ahead and double check the CPU compatibility support list that's available over on the MSI website, because that will list all of the processors that are currently compatible. Fortunately, down here we can see that does include all of the uh, 3000 series APUs like the 3200G and the 3400G. This board also supports the newer APUs, the 4000 series ones like the 4750G and the 4650G. These APUs are technically OEM only, so they're very difficult to just buy uh, at retail like you would a standard like 3600X or something. But a 400 series motherboard with a BIOS update should support these APUs and should also support Ryzen 5000 series, uh, the latest Ryzen 5000 series CPUs like the 5600X, 5900X, so that gives you an upgrade path down the line as well. So other than the CPU and the motherboard, we just need memory, storage, a case, and a power supply, and I'm going to be re 
reusing most of these parts because my focus today is on which CPU and uh, iGPU you should choose in combination with the motherboard, and the rest of the parts don't matter quite as much. That said, for a Ryzen 3000 series CPU, you can get some nice DDR4 3600 memory, and this is a 16 gig kit for about $94. Wait, that was supposed to be on Amazon. And see, as I was parting this out, I was trying to find everything that was in stock. This is out of stock at Newegg, but it is in stock at Amazon. Only one left though. Oh gosh. That said, you don't need to go with this specific memory. The main key points here are that it's a two by eight gig kit. It's a DDR4 3600 speed and it has pretty decent timings. Uh, for storage, you're, you're gonna want storage and you can get a 500 gig class SATA SSD for around $50. Uh, but you know, spend five or 10 bucks more and you can get an NVMe SSD. And this one goes up to like 200 megabytes per second uh, read. So that's significantly faster than a SATA SSD. So I think it's worth the extra five or 10 bucks, even with a budget build. For a power supply, I have a 650 watts Seasonic 80 plus bronze rated unit. You could get away with way less power for this build, but the idea idea is that uh, we're setting this system up so you could easily drop a graphics card into it in the future and you wouldn't have to upgrade anything else along the way. So 650 watts will get you by for anything except for like the highest end the RTX 3080s. For those you might want a 750 watt unit which I have also included in the description. This one's 65 bucks and then the 750 watt one is about 20 bucks more. And for a case we have the NZXT H510. There are plenty of cases. But feel free to choose any case that meets your needs. I just find this is a solid middle of the road case for $70 that includes both an intake and an exhaust fan, has a pretty nice de design and layout. It's easy to build in and it even has a USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C port on the front. Of course, your motherboard would need to have that header too to plug that in. But that's all you would need. And you could put that all together for $533. The downsides here are that you'd be stuck with a four core eight thread processor, um, which is a little bit uh, underpowered in 2021. Although of course, plenty of CPUs that you could upgrade to on this socket. You would not have PCI Express Gen 4 support. And then you would again have that 650 watt power supply. So if you were going for a higher end graphics card, consider a higher end uh, power supply like the Cooler Master Masterwatt 750 watt unit that I have in my next build, which is about 200 bucks more. In fact, exactly $200 more at $733. But we're getting some really nice upgrades here. For one, we're going with the Ryzen 5 4650G. Downside to this is it's difficult to obtain. Upside is that I just ordered one and I will let you guys know if it ships to me properly and what condition it arrives in. This is a six core 12 thread processor. So basically this is equivalent with like a 3600 or 3600X. It's still seven nanometer in the same core and thread count as both of those CPUs. And you can get it for $260, maybe. Maybe if you're able to order through AliExpress and it actually ships properly. But if you consider that a Ryzen 3600 costs $200 right now, we're talking an extra 50 or $60 for that integrated graphics, which right now is a really big value. Boxed versions of this, which don't currently exist, but maybe they will in the future, should include a cooling unit as well. But since we're ordering from AliExpress and they're shipping from China, they do not include a cooler. So I added the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim 2, which is 25 bucks. This is a new cooler, so I'm gonna get to try this one out too. We have a $140 B550, uh, the B550-A motherboard from MSI, and then the same memory kit, the same storage, the same case, and again, just that uh, 100 watt more powerful power supply. So if you're doing what I've been doing and you're like, what are the options for building a computer and not needing a graphics card? Uh, the AMD 4000 series APUs are actually pretty appealing and you can actually search for them and find them over on AliExpress. And just so you guys know, I'm not affiliated with AliExpress at all. I do not have a referral code or anything like that. So um, I'm, I'm not earning anything from this. And in fact, I will tell you right now, I do not know how trustworthy these marketplace sellers on AliExpress actually are. So here's what I would do. There's a bunch of listings for 4650Gs. All of them are in the 250 to $260 range, depending on whether or not shipping is included. So you can click on the name of the store. And you can also see how many units that they're advertising here have been sold. But this is what I did in order to determine uh, where I should buy from. If you go to the store, you can click on the feedback tab. And then here you can see their rating, which uh, like for the Shenzhen Z and Y CPU store is about 4.7, 4.8. And they give the relative rating compared compared to other stores on the site. CP space U store is uh, even a little bit better, 4.7 and 4.8. AMD CPU store, oh, bad. Look at all the red there. Obviously some, some red flags being thrown, so we're not gonna go there. Ming and Yang looking decent as well, but uh, here's where I actually ordered from, SZ CPU store, which has 4.8 and 4.9s and, and tons and tons of ratings over the past one month, three months, and six months. So that is what I did in order to order my CPU, and I really hope it arrives because otherwise I'm gonna have to do a follow-up from this video where I'm like, sorry guys, that 4650G never showed up. But like I said, it doesn't come with a cooler. So for that, we're going with the Pure Rock Slim 2. This is a new updated uh, version two of the Pure Rock 
Fox Slim. They've updated the TDP, so it's 130 watt rated now instead of 120. Smaller cooler with a 92 millimeter fan, but only $25, so that's why I picked that, is because it's a relatively minor budget upgrade in order to add that on. We have the MSI B550-A Pro motherboard. So with B550 here, we would have PCIe Gen 4 access uh, if we so desired, if we upgraded to a CPU that supports that. The 4650 does not support PCIe Gen 4, by the way, that is one of the slight differences with the other uh, 3000 series CPUs. But this board does have like the USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header, which is nice. And an overall, uh, a nice design for only $140 uh, should be in stock fairly soon on Amazon. But once again, if you double check the support list, B550 support is relatively more limited than B450. It only goes back to the Zen 2 and Zen 3 processors, which means 3000 series on the desktop, 4000 series for APUs, but not the 3000 series APUs. And then of course the newest 5000 series uh, Zen 3 CPUs down there as well. All of the 3000 series CPUs, the 3000 Pros, and the 4000 series APUs here, like the 4750G and 4650G, are all Zen 2 parts. Still 7 nanometer, just the last gen 7 nanometer stuff. But do not buy this motherboard if you want to use that 3200G because it just won't work. Again, power supply, just a little bit of an upgrade to $85 for a 750 watt unit. This one's still 80 plus bronze certified, but it's partially modular, so that's also nice. And that pretty much rounds out our list. So again, for about 200 bucks more, what you're gonna get here is a six core 12 thread processor, which is gonna give you significantly more processing chops because not only is it six cores and 12 threads, it's Zen 2, seven nanometer, versus the 3200G, which is Zen plus, 12 nanometer, and you're gonna get a better integrated GPU with this setup, so if you're looking at what games you can play right out of the gates, uh, you'll, you'll be a little bit better set up with this solution. The downside, of course, is actually obtaining this CPU since you have to order it from China, and of course this setup is more expensive. But if you decided to add in a graphics card down the line, you could totally do that without really needing to upgrade your CPU here, but then you also have an upgrade pass to other eight core, 12 core, and 16 core CPUs since you are set up with a B550 motherboard. So I feel like of the builds to Today I'm showing you guys this one's probably the most flexible and it will probably also get you the most actual gaming performance right out of the gate. But next up we're going to look at some Intel builds. Because last week I talked about the Intel 11th gen launch and I was like what is the best case scenario for someone who might actually be investing in an Intel uh, setup right now. And I think some of the 6 core Intel CPUs actually do make a pretty good case for themselves. Starting with the i5-11400 which is 6 cores and 12 threads and only costs you $184. And yes this does have an iGPU as well. I've paired that with an ASRock B560 motherboard. The B560 motherboards do not allow for overclocking so it's actually a good pair with the CPU but you can still do memory overclocking on B 560 so you can still plug in the XMP value for your crucial 16 gig DDR4 3600 kit and that should also help the iGPU's performance since the iGPU shares your system memory since it doesn't have its own. A B 560 motherboards are less expensive this one's only $105 right now but they're also trickling out pretty slowly there's a lot more um, Z590 motherboards than B 560 so you will have to keep that in mind and sort of keep your eye on the markets in the near future if you're actually out there trying to hunt down parts. Apart from that, everything else is the same I used from the other builds. So just to quickly run down the important stuff, the CPU is the i5-11400. This one has been uh, pretty favorably reviewed because of the price, $183.99. It's got fast cores, six of them. It's going to be a very good gaming CPU. The only downsides are going to be that it's locked for overclocking, so you are going to be stuck with the frequencies that it's going to run at out of the gate, which is up to 4.4 gigahertz, uh, depending on your power limit situation and stuff like that, but that's not horrible by any stretch, but it is a bit slower than the 11600K, which goes up to 4.9 gigahertz out of the box, and then you can also overclock it. So my last build uses the 11600K and just swaps out a couple parts to make that sort of a more reasonable proposition. But going back to the motherboard again, the B560M from ASRock is only $105. Uh, it's difficult, actually I found it most difficult to find really good priced motherboards to pair with some of these new Rocket Lake Intel 11th Gen Core CPUs. This one's $105 but it's not actually out yet, so it's difficult to say exactly how good it's going to be. It releases on the 9th. Historically though, the Pro 4 AC series from ASRock on both the AMD and the Intel side has been a pretty decent uh, solution though, and this also does have like, you know, a 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header, a little bit of RGB LEDs. Ooh look, an M.2 Wi-Fi card slot. That's, that's interesting too. It is a micro ATX motherboard though, so although I have left the uh, NZXT full-size case in here, if you do go with this motherboard, consider micro ATX cases because that 
that'll probably look a little bit better. A micro ATX board in a full size ATX case can look just a little awkward. But once again, with the same memory kits, storage, case, and power supply, total price here is $577. That's about $40 or $45 more than the less expensive AMD solution. You're giving up unlocked for overclocking support. You're getting stuck with a motherboard that will not allow you for overclocking in the future. So if you did want to upgrade, say, your CPU in this build and drop in an 11600K or maybe even one of the 8 core or 10 core models from the 10th gen series. You could do that, but you wouldn't have that avenue in the future to be like, oh, I really like this, this whole computer building thing. I want to try overclocking. You'd have to swap your motherboard out to do that, which uh, is, is kind of like rebuilding your whole computer. So here's my last build. This one's $813. Again, about 30, 40 ish dollars more than the uh, AMD higher end solution. But here we have the i5-11600K, six cores and 12 threads. I found this to be interesting. Everyone was saying 270 bucks is a good price for this CPU and they've already lowered it five bucks. Look at that. And within less in a week we have a price drop on the 11600k now this one is going to be faster it's going to be unlocked for overclocking and if you compare it to the 11400 at least it does have the better uhd graphics the 750 instead of 730 and look you get a, a, a screwdriver too which is which is probably the reason most people are going to buy this however you do not get a cooler. So I've added a $50 cooler, which is a significant bump up in price, but since this is like the higher end overclocking capable version of this build, I decided to do at least a decent cooler on there. The Scythe Mugen 5 uh, Rev B uh, is compatible with both AMD and Intel. It's only 50 bucks and it's a really nice air cooler. I believe that there's a black version as well, but that might be 20 or 30 bucks more. For a motherboard, again, I was sort of having a difficult time finding like a really reasonably priced and, uh, you know, decently specced Z590 motherboard, but Z590 590 is the chipset you need to go with if you're going with an Intel K SKU or unlocked processor if you want to actually unlock it. So this is the Asus Prime Z590-P, which uh, looked like a pretty decent motherboard in terms of the feature set and layout. It's even got, again, that USB 3.2, 3.2 Gen 1 connector, the, the Type-C connector for the front panel. I was hoping to find something a, a little bit less expensive than this, but at least we're keeping it below $200. Uh, but again, if you are interested in a little bit more about like the Intel motherboard situation, Z590 and the motherboards that are out, as well as uh, B560 and the motherboards that are out. There are two articles from Anantech that go over pretty much all the boards that they could get specs on right now. Like they're pretty huge articles, but they also have some nice assessments of sort of the differences between them. So there's a link to the description if you guys want to read more. Other than that, again, I just went with that uh, higher wattage 750 watt power supply to support a higher range graphics card once you get to that point. And then I wanted to point out if you're looking at the 11600K or the 11400, there's also the 11500, which is kind of priced right in the middle at $218 dollars right now. This will give you better integrated graphics than the 11400. Uh, this has the same iGPU as the 11600K. So if you don't care about CPU overclocking, but you do want slightly better iGPU to play games with right out of the gate, then uh, maybe consider the 11500. And if you've completely decided on Intel and you want to build on their current platform, uh, then also look at the 10 series processors because 10 series processors are compatible with 400 series or 500 series chipset motherboards from Intel. And for instance, here, the last Gen i5 10400 is down to like $160. And this, if you're really trying to scrape by for as little money as possible and you're building Intel, is probably going to be the way to go. But the integrated graphics for the 10 series is not as good as the integrated graphics for the 11 series. So that's what you should be weighing there. And that is my final build with a overall retail price of $813, uh, currently at least. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. If you guys are interested in any of the parts I've talked about, you can click on the links down in the description. I have all four of the builds laid out there. Please keep in mind that prices and availability are subject to change. And uh, let's, let's all keep our fingers crossed that GPUs become available again more regularly because that will allow me to do these videos without having to say, well, you gotta consider this and this and this, and it makes it much more complicated. If you enjoyed this video though, I'd really love your feedback, whether it's a comment in the comment section down below or voting on the straw poll that's down in the description or hitting the like button or subscribing to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future or checking out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses and beer sets with bamboo coasters and fine imperial pint glasses with the Paul's Harbor logo emblazoned upon them. It's all really nice stuff and it's a great way to support my channel and get yourself some merch in the meantime. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.